Hello everyone, and welcome to the fourth part of this series on procedural content generation in Unreal Engine 5. In this video, I will show you two different ways to spawn meshes on top of other meshes. This will allow you to create more randomness in your content generation. The first way I will be describing is using sockets, and the second way in using the mesh sampler node. First, I will be talking about using socket points on your meshes. The very first thing you need to do is choose the mesh where you want to have another object spawned on top of. Then in this mesh, you need to create a socket point. For me, this will be using this wooden pallet asset. In this example, I'm going to create a simple socket. I'm not going to rename it and I'm just going to put it in a very random place, but a very obvious one. Back in my PCG graph, I will need to use the copy points node. I will then attach the static mesh spawner that generates the pallets into the target section of the node. And then I need to search for the mesh sockets to points node. I will attach this new node to the source of the copy points node. Then go into the mesh sockets to points node. You can see in the options that the static mesh is empty. This is where you need to choose the mesh that has sockets on. In our case, this is the wooden pallet where we just created a socket point. Now, if I allow the debug option, I can now see on the scene a point that appears. This is where the socket is. From then, this is exactly like the previous videos. We can simply go into the next node, which can be a transfer points node, where I can choose a rotation to make it more random. And then I will spawn some new mesh. We can see on the scene now that a mesh is spawning on top of our pallet. And if I move the socket around, then the spawning point is moved too. So the mesh is now spawned on the left side of the wooden pallet. Of course, in this video, we only have one socket point, but you can have multiple ones. So in this case, you will be able to create multiple spawn points for your different objects. The second way to spawn meshes on top of other meshes is to use the mesh sampler node. Just like for the socket points, search for the copy points node. Again, attach the static mesh spawner into the target. Then you can search for mesh sampler then the moment you get this new node, you can see an error. You can fix this error by changing the static mesh option from none to whatever mesh you want to use. In this case, I'm using a top crate. You can then attach that to the source of the copy points node. If I use the debug option, I can then see in my scene all the different points that the mesh sampler is using. All the white squares that you see in the screen are different points where objects can spawn now. This is because the sampling method here is one point per triangle. So every triangle of the mesh has one point in the center, which is where another object can spawn. You have other sampling methods you can use, for example, one point per vertices. In this case, you will have a lot more sampling points. Then if you attach the static mesh spawner, each point will be able to spawn a new mesh. In my case, for this demonstration, I will use a English IV mesh from Quixel Bridge. As you can see here, there's a lot of different mesh spawning and you have multiple ways to reduce the number of objects you can spawn and you can also change the size or the rotations of those objects by using a transform point node. This example shows you that in some situations you may have too many points on your mesh, but you can reduce this number of points. For example, we can choose a density filter node and change the lower bound or the upper bound to fit the needs of your scene. Using a density noise node with the density filter is a good combination. You can then, for example, change the minimum or the maximum value of the density noise. This will change the total number of points on your mesh. Finally, 
you may be in some situations where you want to spawn new points on only the top of the crate, for example, or only the sides. To do that, you can use a normal to density node. By default, the normal to density node has a Z value of 1, which is only the top and the bottom of the crate. To be more precise, this is only for the normals facing upwards. If you're interested in only having meshes spawn on the sides, you can then play around with the X and Y value of the normal to density node. Sometimes you may want to spawn meshes only on the top and on one side, or only on some sides and also on the top. In this kind of situation, you can have multiple normal to density nodes, and all of them will connect to the same static mesh spawner at the end. Then you would be able to choose which sides of the mesh you want to spawn some objects and which sides should not spawn any objects. This is it for this video. I strongly encourage you to play around the normal to density node, the density noise node or the density filter to match the needs of your scene. Using these nodes is also very important because it can help you in the performance of your scene. If you spawn too many meshes when this is not necessary, this will strongly impact your performance. Anyway, see you in the next video. Bye.